Hello everyone. So we did miss the June tour of showing you up here the front of the garden. But we're gonna go ahead and do it either way. This already, what, it's past 4th of July, a couple of days after 4th of July. And Ambrose is going to be like always behind the camera. Hey everybody. And we're gonna go ahead and show you what's going on because it's growing out to be really, really pretty. And like always, this has been a really fun area to, to garden in. Not just because of the slope area and you know, it's the front of the house, but also because we get to do it with the kids. This is one of the plantings that since we moved here to this house, we've always planted as a family and it's very exciting, very colorful all the time. We love to do that because of the kiddos. And also so we can have a lot of our pollinator friends out here and I think we're gonna see a couple of them around here. The bees are going crazy right now. We have a few bees that are still out. It's a little bit before golden hour time hits. Um, it's been raining a lot. Um, so we have those clouds coming in and out. So first off, let's go ahead and show those limelight hydrangeas that are starting to open those flowers. And this is, I'm saying their full third year that we have them. Um, since we planted them and boy have they grown we did get them in i'm gonna say a three gallon container the day we did um when we did first get them and they look a lot much bigger and stronger as well so we're hoping that this year they hold up those big blooms hopefully without us having to help them out and yep. staking them up or ambrose because ambrose is really the one that always yeah, we're still debating whether we're going to stake those up to hold them in, but I, I, I'm hoping that I pruned them. Uh, I left them long enough when I pruned them for them to hold themselves up. Uh, normally, right now with the rain, they would be drooping a little bit, so I'm surprised that they're standing up that, that And that was right a now. question that Ambrose got because um, when, when Ambrose did the pruning to these limelight hydrangeas this, um, what was it, this fall, um, Ambrose left them a little bit taller yes. than usual. And that's why he did it. He did it so the stems could hold up, you know, grow thick still, be still thick. Yep. Um, so they can hold the blooms a little more better around this time. And the reason being is because we get a lot of rain here where we live. Um, for any of our, you know, new viewers, we are zone 7B and we are in Quantico, Virginia. And we get quite a bit of rain. Yep. Okay, so yeah, I can't wait to see those beautiful blooms start to go crazy. Okay, so let's start over here on this side. We do have recently Ambrose um, planted, I think he brought out what our kiddos too, right? Yes. He planted some strawberries here. You wanna tell them a little bit of what you have there? So we have the buried treasure red and buried treasure pink strawberries in there. Uh, we decided to put some here in the front because we get plenty of sun and plenty of shade. So I think it's a good spot for them to get an equal amount of sun and shade for these strawberries. And you can see they're producing quite a bit. There's a lot of flowers going on. The kids already picked out a few. Yeah, so they've been eating some strawberries from here. And the what, birds. Yeah, the birds too. <laughs> Which we need to cover them with so something soon. What we actually planted up here is we have some rosemary planted with these as well because I, I did want to have some something else other than just the fruit up here. I wanted some herbs as well. So uh, kind of a different take on planting up some uh, fruit and herbs up here. And then on the other side, we'll show that in a little bit, but the other side, I actually have some oregano with those strawberries on that other side. Yep, and then let's talk a little bit about this guy right here. And look, ooh, I see a Japanese beetle. Yep. Okay, so this is a viburnum, and this viburnum also went Ambrose. I don't know what you did. You did the, the was it the strawberries or something? Yeah, when we did the strawberries, we actually kind of turned that into a topiary, I and guess. And you guys just loved it when he cut, went for it and cut it back. I think y'all said, go ahead and limp, limp it. Is that? Limp it up. I've never heard of that guy. So I was like, I guess that's what you call it. And I love what he did. He he went for it that day. And thank you so much guys for all the cool comments. It was really nice for him to see to see that. Um, so yeah, I love what he did to it. And it's actually been really nice to see it like that. And the crazy, I, I don't know if it's a male or female viburnum. We've never seen it bloom since we got here. Yep. And I keep on saying, I don't know. Be, um, we've never seen it bloom. Because they, the, the people that do the landscaping here, they cut everything at the wrong time of year. So, you know, they cut back the blooms if it does, if it is a female. Okay, so then the daylilies. It's been daylily time. These, I think, are coming to an end. These are um, heart of rainbow. Rainbow rhythm. Rainbow heart rhythm. Of rhythm my soul. Heart of my. Sound of my heart, sorry. Heart of sound my. Sound of my heart. Something like that. 
I keep on forgetting that. Yep. But look at this, so beautiful. I just think it's such a beautiful, it has a very beautiful romantic bloom. And the edging is gorgeous. Yep. It has that, my God, it's just so pretty. Look at that. Look at that beautiful edging inside is so bright. I just love them so much, the daily which is which is really, really funny thing for me. That I, I love that wine around here before I keep going. But I never really cared for them. Um, you know, growing back home with my my grandma and my mom and aunts, we had them everywhere. But we never, I never saw them grow any in these colors, in these varieties. So I didn't know. And I, I don't know, I just didn't see anything special in them until we got here and we were wondering what could be great to grow in a slope. Um, and you know, poor soil as well when we first got here. And daylilies, daylilies are a wonderful plant for slope, slope areas. Uh, they will grow in just about anything. We have clay soil, so it's wonderful for, uh, you know, to have them planted here. And they just keep going. I think this is their second year yeah. they're on. And I also love it that when the, they're not in bloom, I, I use them in the front right here because when when there's nothing, the, the hydrangeas up, up on top are not blooming, at least I have the daylilies blooming. And then the daylilies turn off, they're done blooming, the grass looks pretty, it fills in the, yep. the, the grass from the daylily, and then we have our white from the hydrangeas. So that... That's why I love them. I have them the way I do right here. Okay, so then we have, um, oh my goodness, I love this one that we've been trying to grow so much here. And this is the first time we actually get it to look nice. We had it growing between the hydrangeas for fillers, but they still weren't getting enough light. Ambrose actually um, moved them down here not long ago and they loved it. This is plain the blues salvia. And it's gorgeous, that beautiful blue, purple color. Um, the bees are just loving it. Yeah, they definitely love it. They attack it all the time. You can see that bees are still on it right now. It's towards the end of the day, and they're just they're just all over and the And the leaves salvia. are very pretty. That, that's another thing. I do love flowers a lot, but it's nice to have plants that have very, very pretty leaves. That's one thing that I love so much. Yep. Just in case, for some reason, they're not in flowering, but... That's not the case with these salvias. These salvias will bloom all the way to from planting to um, um, to frost, so it starts to cool off. Okay, and then down here, let's go ahead and go with with um, some that all of a sudden I planted in that didn't were not planted the day we actually <laughs> did the planting. The 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 ones that just slipped in here. So this is high noon. It's a bush daisy. And it's so, it, it, it's little and compact and nice. And it can be, I love how I see it sometimes growing in little hanging baskets with yeah. petunias or um, verbena, trailing verbena. Just looks so pretty. And we had a few there. So I was like, let's go ahead and plant them. I didn't know where we were going to put them. We don't have that much um, full sun to work with. Yep. So Definitely love those. Those are actually beautiful looking. Yeah. It, it turned out to be a very yellow sunny area um, let's talk about yellow with these beautiful beautiful yellows here that are the saturn um the sunflower it's, yep. it's like the one that we used a lot last year yep sun credible saturn is yes. uh it's a, a a different take on sun credible yellow with the yes. saturn like angie was talking about it has that beautiful ring color on there uh, I'm just loving that color. Look at Matches all the, pollinators. the stamen. A lot of pollinators on this one. You can see all the bees. We actually have uh, like there's all kinds of stuff. There's bees. There's butterflies. We even had a hummingbird moth uh, around hanging around too. here. I have some video of that that and I can show. And regular hummingbirds. Yep, regular hummingbirds as um, well. But what I love about these little the, these little sunflowers is how they branch out. They don't just shoot out. You know the single stems up. Um, they branch out into a little bush, and they're always in bloom. So I, I just love them so much. They're very, very pretty. The girls love to come and cut them and take some for indoors. They're just beautiful. And all this deadhead's on its own, so it's, it's perfect, too. Um, and then we have um, the petunias, jazz berry supertunia. Yes. So 
my goodness, I, I'm in love, in love with the jazz berry color. Um, this berry color is just gorgeous. Um, they're not fully grown yet. It's been, I know I've heard it from everybody too. Um, it's been a little slow on the annuals this year um, for us as well. We've been fertilizing almost every third watering with uh, the water soluble. Um, that's what we use from Proven Winners. And yeah, they're, they're starting to do their thing and they're starting to, you know, they're gonna, I'm, I'm hopeful that they're gonna pour out soon. Yeah. They yeah. are starting to do their trailing, but they are so pretty. And I'm gonna be honest, at first when we received them, um, we had received our plants from Proven Winners and you know these guys came came in there. You know it's one of the new super super tunias that are out in garden centers. And you know um, we're gonna go ahead and try it out, right? And I I didn't know what to think about the color at first. I was like, what is it gonna go with? And then because we have a red home, Ambrose was all for it. He oh, was yeah. like he was loving it. As soon as I saw it put together with with a new coleus El Brido as well. Then I started to combine other colors. It was like, it just goes with everything. And I'm so in love with it. It also has a little purple. There's very, I don't know if yeah, you can I, see it. I love it because it, 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 it's kind of gorgeous. To me, I love it because there's some colors in there. It looks, uh, it has a pink. It has My a very goodness. fuchsia color. Sometimes you see purple. Sometimes you see a bluish tint. I just absolutely love, love the way it, it looks. And, it's and, fun. And I'm, I'm going to uh, say something right now real quick. And the reason why... Hummingbirds. Look, there's two hummingbirds there playing around. There's one hiding in there, guys. Look at that. All of a sudden, they're just hanging out right here. Oh, look I hope you can them. see them, but they're right there by the flag. He's playing around. It's their feeding time, and yeah. we're interrupting them. So we had to go ahead and, like, take a little break. Um, we got so distracted with the hummingbirds, and then there was vehicles passing by. But I know we were talking about the... The super tunias. Ambrose yeah. was letting y'all know how much he loves them. Um, I don't know. They're gorgeous. Yeah, I love the color. Absolutely love those. The color's just, just great on them. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for them to actually, you know, pour out and start doing their thing. And as you can see, you know, uh, we I keep on repeating this all the time when we, we are living on a base. So we don't really get to do what we want around here. This is what's given to us. They come and trim everything. Um... We were going to go ahead and do the trimming here for the bed, yep. but we decided to leave it alone. I think we were going to do it. I don't know if Ambrose wanted to still work I, I, with us just to clean this area up right here. I might edge it up just a little bit. It's just every time I, I have an opportunity to actually come out here with some tools and stuff like that, either we're gardening or there's just a bad weather that just doesn't allow it. Like today, yeah. uh, today was as my last day off from the, the 4th of July weekend, and the goal was to come out here and do a little bit of maintenance here, but then the rain just came out of nowhere, so. But I bring that up because as y'all see, there's a bare spot there, and I yep. decided to take advantage of that, so that way the the the, the super tunias could have a place to spill over and fill this area. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if it actually fills out. It should, they should. Like I said, everything's just been so slow and growing, the yep. annuals, even, you, you know, even though we, we are fertilizing. Okay, so what's next? What what did oh the lemon coral sedum? Oh How yeah. Can, you know I, I I can lemon coral sedum is just something that I need to have all the time. And the lemon coral sedum is that right there you see in lime. I just love it because it plays well with everything. It's just beautiful. I you know we grow it everywhere. This is a perennial for us here. Sometimes it's it's an annual. Yep. Um, it it just I love I love it when it, it flowers as yellow little blooms. Yep. Um, and that happens around the beginning of spring, sometimes in fall too. Um, and and then you know we grow it out in the back in shade. We grow it in oh we have a, a very wet areas out back. Yep. It grows in that too, it, with mixed in shade and wet areas. It's just it's just a beautiful plant to grow oh, yeah. anywhere. Um, so then what else do we have up here? Oh, yes, we were talking about that right now because I think over here, me killed one when I moved it. I transplanted <laughs> not long ago. Well, so, I wouldn't say killed it. I think it's just, you know, it was a bad transplant. We, we kind of damaged it a little bit. but it, it, it was rough to bring it out from where I had it. But um, what we're talking about here is verbena, and I hope I say it right, meter shower verbena, bonaresis. Yep. Bon Yes. Verbena, is that the name I think? Correct. There's a, the actual name. And, but this one doesn't seed. 
So this one is just, you know, it, it's, it's a variety from Prairie Winners, and it doesn't seed, and it's, it's starting to, you know, bush out, yep. put on some growth. And I just love this one because it just brings all types of pollinators over. Yep. And just I'm like gonna, all these plants that you see here. And so Angie was talking about one. So there's one there that yeah. we actually planted and it's just not doing so well. Um, we didn't really plant it late. I think these uh, these daylilies just grew out so much foliage real quick and, and it allowed that one to get that much sun. It doesn't but, have sun, yeah. But it was, it was kind of damaged. It. So, you know, we, we didn't have our... Our I broke it, guys. Of it being uh, a great <laughs> I, I broke it when I grabbed it. It was it was around a rose somewhere yeah. in the side, and there's a video of that. And I I just grabbed it really quick because it was a very tight spot I was working in. Yeah. It happens, you know, things happen in the garden like that. And then um, there, there's a plant that originally wasn't in the plans that Angie uh, another put in one. There. It's because <laughs> it's it's quickly become I, we say favorite about every plant, Jesus. But I think <laughs> I think it, it's become one of our favorite coleus. It is. It is my favorite coleus for this year, for sure. I've planted this, I think, for so many people around here in containers because I just love it so much. So this is El Brido, and we'll show it to you right now in, in the containers that we put together um, for ourselves. But this coleus is just so, so pretty. It has colors from orange and red yeah. and a bit of green, and it also has... Um, um, what is it? The, the like a yellow, that yellow that plays so well with. I I feel like I could just. That's why I went ahead and planted yeah. so much color this year up here. Definitely, that, this colis is definitely the chameleon of the garden. I love yes, it because it works. This one, when I say lemon coral sedum works well with everything, this colis actually works well with everything. You want to put it in shade, it works great. You want to put it that's in what sun, I was say. it works perfectly. You want to mix it with some perennials, some sun loving plants, some shade. This this colis is just awesome. It's just amazing. It's beautiful, and the leaf is gorgeous. The shape of the leaf, actually, it's well. Show them what you have planted there, and then we'll show them what it looks like in the containers. All right. So I talked about putting strawberries in the front of the garden. As you can see, uh, this other side has it. So I'm gonna pan back to that side because we did it on that side over there where that viburnum is, or the edge of the bed, is where I showed you the first strawberries. And then this is the second side where we have some, uh, again, some berry treasure pink and some berry treasure red. The red on this side, not looking too good, but it also wasn't a big plant when we actually planted it. So it's it's doing actually great. And then we have some oregano that I planted there. So like I said, I wanted some herbs and some some fruit up here. And, and these are two herbs that I definitely use a lot. You guys have seen our videos. We, we love to cook. So oregano is definitely one of those uh, those herbs that we use, and rosemary is definitely one of those herbs we use. So uh, just, you know, a different take up here, and, and maybe I'll do a video soon on, on building a cloche for, for uh, is that the way you say it? I don't remember. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a cover for the... For, build something for, for these uh, these strawberries, because the birds are definitely loving I've it. I've seen the, what are they, the bluebirds come yep. around, and they love it so much. And he did, we did go ahead and put some tomatoes here. They're very late, very late... Um, um, yeah, seed so, starters, so, so very late seed starters, but I'm hoping they produce very quick because they're not they're not big tomatoes. These are actually um, patio sized tomatoes and cocktail tomatoes. So they should grow maybe about two to three feet tall and produce a good variety of, of tomatoes there. And once they start to show, we'll definitely show you guys what they are. So let's go ahead and talk about these containers. I can't wait to show them. Can they see them? Not yet. There we go. These are the containers that we put together. After we had done containers, you know, for the project, the, 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 the on-base um, project, for the, the community project here on base, we waited, we waited ahead and did ours at the end. And even it's, you know, they were the last ones to be done. They, they're they loving it. They're, they're living their best life right now. Oh, I love my these goodness. Containers. They're gorgeous. So here we have, who I think has inspired the whole garden for us, the Colian El Brido. And I'm even seeing some pinks in there. I'm telling you, it is a beautiful. It's like I said, it's a, it's a chameleon. It works perfect. Beautiful color. It's just gorgeous. And I've actually come out here and taken some trimmings already, um, cut it back so the rest of the plants have, a, you know, some yep. light under there, which I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of maintenance Ooh, again. Look at that lantana working its way over but here. But it keeps on pushing out. Yep. So before we get to the lantana, we went ahead and planted it oh, yes. with um, um, Prince Tud papyrus grass, which a favorite in our garden in all sizes. I love this grass so much. And we you know we same plants are in the other container. Um, and then we have, I think the other one's blooming more if you want to show yeah, that one. Yeah, we can come to this one because it is blooming more. This is um, 
Lu luscious, luscious citron. citron. And lantana. I love lantana. Look at that. I am a sucker for lantana. It's I a think... beautiful looking plant. The, the leaves though, they're so shiny. Me with the yeah. leaves. I, I just, I, I love and, anything and that. I'm, I'm loving this green. combination because uh, uh, like, like we talked about the super tuna jasper. This is super tuna jasper as well. Look at the way it's intermingling back here. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's just so, not a lot, but it's intermingling. Something we were looking forward to having it do, and it's just looking great. We went ahead and squeezed in some cake pops. Yeah, I think that's so, what they're called. Cake. It's a, verb, a trailing verbena. Yeah, so this is cake pops verbena uh, in purple. I think they have it in pink as well, right? Yeah, is that they what do. We say? Okay. It's in purple as so well. So this is cake pops in purple. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, I love the plant. I love the flower. I just... Maybe, I don't know, because we planted it late or we waited so I long I think to it still needs some time. In the, um, to, it, it hasn't really... We've had hot days, but I really yeah. think that we still need... You know, we're still... I, I want to say our container is still... You know, it was one of the last ones planted. Yeah. Let's give it some time still. Yeah, I did. I, I, did, I was really hoping for that one to spread really, really quickly because I wanted to see it Yeah. kind of intermingle, intermingle with the whole container there. But, you know, time will tell. Like I said, it's getting hotter. And, and I know, like we talked about, it's been a weird yeah. season and we've had... I mean, we just now hit the 90s a couple yes. of days ago. It's which been is, very cool, very pretty. Like is, right yeah. now, it's it's very weird because so, it wants to rain. And you can definitely tell the heat and here it's because it's humid, but the, it's it's fresh. Yeah, I don't even yeah. know how to describe it. Yeah. It's just so it's the, weird. The, the plants are definitely let us, letting us know that the heat is here because we're starting to get, like I said, a lot more growth out of these containers. But because I'm seeing that, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and and make sure that I don't let anybody else. Um, cover it completely yeah so like i'm gonna have to do this again i'm gonna have to come in and probably just take a few few of these little branches off of here we have a long season still so i always tell everybody like with potato vine and coleus do not be scared you know have fear on trimming those like plants like this annuals like this like like these back because they will they will keep pushing out more growth i'm gonna step back real quick so they can see the whole garden so, from up here that's what i go ahead and do so that way they the other plants can get some light and they don't start to also um like the petunias so they don't start to um stop flowering from this area because like plants like this that will cover it and then you know they won't flower from from that area right there but yeah the the, the, the lantana is starting to make its way out here to this area and that looks so pretty yep okay so, so i'm gonna show them this side real quick so we did oh, repeat yeah the uh oh, what we have yeah. in the bed on that side as you can see we have we that have area a there bush daisy there and some super tuna jazzberries um kind of wish we would have pushed that jazzberry a little bit higher me too um <laughs> but we kind of but uh, again I, I i'm okay with it because again angie talked about the the landscapers here they take care of these bushes right here that we yes. didn't plant and you yes. know the fear is that they do some trimming down there and they cut off some of that jazzberry but they, they, they are very careful though with yep. our annuals though when they come around as so. you can see like i said angie repeated that side over on this side so just so you we've get a never good... had anything there so yeah. i thought it would be nice because when we're always do, taking photos and stuff for instagram and facebook yep. there's nothing there so i'm gonna push out real quick so you guys can see the it's whole it's nice it's nice that there's something to um when so, I take pictures of the containers, for there to be a back. Yeah. So there's what the row. whole front yard looks like with the house, guys. So you can take a look, definitely at what it looks like all planted up. And I'm gonna push back in because Angie's gonna talk about those plants up there. Okay, so um, daylilies again. <laughs> that is tiger swirl daylily. Beautiful yellow. It has a red inside, maroonish yep. red, and it's been flowering its little heart out. That one is just so, so pretty. Um, they've all been do, pulling a big show. This one blooms a little later than the ones that we showed you uh, um, before, in yep. the beginning of the video. But it's very, very pretty. So here's the crazy part about these is we thought they were gonna be done pretty quickly, just like the uh, sound of my heart on that side. Yeah. But you can see every single one of these is a bud. It has a lot more to go. Waiting to open. And yep. there's plenty all over the place here. So as you see on the Oh, there's, we have right next to it a um, lilac. So I've only seen that lilac bloom, I'm going to say once. once. Yeah. And it's because once again, when they come around here to trim everything for us, they trim it at the bad, at the bad time of year. So you, <laughs> they trim off, you know, everything that is supposed to bloom for the next season. So yep. that's what's really sad about it. But, you know, um, 
hopefully this year we can go ahead and hope that that doesn't happen. Yep. Or I'm around to be able to, you know, for that not to happen. And then right there we have um, Strawberry Hill. She's not looking that great this year. She did flower a lot, as you can see. She needs some deadheading already. Yep. But I don't know. She she flowered like crazy. But her leaves, her foliage just didn't... I think it's the Japanese beetles that came around and just did away with, with them. This year has been kind of weird for this rose because last year... For all roses. It, well, all our roses. Um, I, I speak specifically for Strawberry Hill because she had a lot of foliage last she year. She did. This year is just, uh, I, I think it's, it's it's and I hate to say it, guys, but we do, like we said, we do a lot of container gardening, and, and it's a lot of maintenance, and, and maybe we just needed to replant it or put some more um, it know, has a nutrients big, in there. It has a big container. It does, um, and it's not that old of a rose either. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, she got fertilized and everything. Yeah. Yeah, um, she's putting some more growth back on. Right? And not, don't let it, don't let us fool you into thinking that it's not doing too great. And because roses here, we do um, in containers. They get watered every second yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I told Ambrose the other day that I don't know. Sometimes you know I do come and check the container. Yep. And it looks like it needs water. So I've been just checking it myself. And if it needs water, even though it's not the second day, I come and give it water. And I think that's why it's starting to grow more leaves as yep. well. Okay, so I'm going to come up here. I okay. or, or, I don't know, is that go okay? Ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Got a little friend right here. This little guy that comes out a lot. Oh, we have these little salamanders and stuff yeah. all over the place. So before I forget, because a lot of times, you know, I don't mention these guys right here. And I have a few, a couple of people that have been asking to show them um, around winter time. They wanted to know what was going to happen with them, you know, if they were going to do good um, in winter time. Well, this is right here, Blue Fall Cypress. And I got it because of its beautiful foliage, the blue in it. And of course, the, you know, the red of the house, it, I just wanted to see something so, you know, a blue foliage like this. Um, we had a lot of snow. So they're in containers. And then they're exposed out here to all the elements. They were smushed all the way down, frozen forward. I thought we were going to lose them. I put pictures on Instagram about it. I think Ambrose even did video on yeah. all that. They, I thought I was going to lose them. And in the containers too, these are actually from Crescent Gardens. And they're supposed to be uh, good for winter, um, for the heat, for everything. So they actually did. They wintered over wonderful in them um and here they are yep they've done you know they've done wonderful i thought too they were probably gonna scorch i don't know why i thought they would scorch their their for zone seven um it just gets so hot up here that the sun yep. i thought it would but no and they've put on good growth many people tell me that you guys have been growing them in your gardens in, in the ground and they're fast growers yeah, they put on a lot of growth we'll see how it goes we don't have a long time here so We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that wherever we move to, we're able to grow this beautiful, you know, these beautiful trees. So I did plant a couple of things in here. I wasn't too sure what I was going to do up here this year because we have a lot of color uh, out out in the in the front bed. So this is, I'm going to say... Plum dandy. Plum dandy. Beautiful, beautiful planted. I only have two, so I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it, but I did know that it that I wanted it yeah. Next to the blue of that. I just love it so much. And then I played around with some other plants that we had sent to us. It, it, it's a super bell. I can, um, sunset, I think. Tropical sunrise, I think Tropical it was. Tropical sunrise. If it's wrong, we'll correct it, guys. And then right here, I'm so bad with the names, guys. I forget what that one is as well. But We'll go ahead and put all yeah. the names on there. But I went ahead and just had a little fun with it. And then we have, and look, guys. <laughs> the reason why we don't have any blooms right now and our roses are looking the way they are. So then right here are the roses that Ambrose and the girls planted not long ago. By by now you'll be seeing that video. Y'all had already seen that video. Um, if not, go ahead and check it out so y'all can see which roses these are. These yep. are new um, varieties for 2023 of roses from Proven Winners. And the exciting part is that, you know, there's now for the first time ever, there is climbing roses, Prairie Winter Climbing Roses, which 
I, I'm just so happy about because they're really, really good roses. And like I always say, if you're intimidated or it's hard for you for some reason to grow other types of roses, yeah. then you need to go ahead and grab yourself some of the Proven Winners ones because oh, yeah. they're just so, so easy. And we'll come back with time and talk more about these roses um, once they start to flush out again. Oh, yeah. um, I did plant something a few hours ago. <laughs> I was up here planting and we we're doing more videos. And... Um, this is licorice, white licorice um, plant, and it was it was not doing that great. It was in this little container. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I planted it in the other one with the rose, and the reason I went and planted it with that is because that plant doesn't need a lot of fertil fertilizer. It doesn't need to be fertilized. Yeah. And also, it's drought tolerant. So, um, in the beginning, of course, you have to water it because it's a new plant until it gets established a few weeks, just like the roses. After that, the roses don't get watered every day, and that plant will be great to be in there, um, you know, in the pot with it, sharing, you know, that pot. Um, the only thing is, I'm gonna see how big it gets because yeah. I know I, we did grow some type of licorice, but I don't remember how big it got. So, and then this is what we planted today that you guys probably, yeah, this, I think you probably have this video out, this video on, this, will be out on the planting. This tour, yep. So this right here, you're going to see it as a little baby still. This is, and I don't remember the name. Let me go ahead. That's why I have these here. This is meant to be Queen Nectarine. New plant too for 2023 out in garden centers. You can find it. All those plants you can find on Proven Winners to order. Um, Pink Profusion on this side, Salvia. That's not a new plant. This is though. For next year and then this is rock and low bright idea sedum which gosh that beautiful yellow yep and then ambrose um like i said i love earth. thyme this is some thyme definitely something we use all the time even again. in winter we're using that guy right here so i guess that's it i guess that's all we have for today let's go down there okay guys we're going to wrap it up it's humid i i don't even know how it's feeling this way right now. I'm over here sweating up a storm, Ambrose, too. Um, we just wanted to go ahead and show you this. It really does want to come down in rain. I think that's why, you know, it's so humid right now. We just wanted to show you. We didn't get to show it to you on, in June, you know, so I said, why not? You know, it's beginning of July still. Not much has changed since, you know, yeah. a couple of days from June. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that everything, everything starts to push out growth pretty soon as the temperatures are, you know, picking up already. I'm super excited about this year and all the beautiful color there is. So um, let me know what you guys have growing. You know, I'm always I'm always asking you, go ahead and come and show us on Facebook too, on our group to see, you know, you can put pictures there and share um, so we can see what you guys are growing as well in your gardens. And have you tried the new plants, you know, this year that are out there from Proven Winners in garden centers? Let us know and what is your favorite right now that you're growing or any type of plant. It doesn't matter which brand. Just let us know what you're growing and what's your favorite at the moment. We would have another tour later on in the season. I just want to show this before it starts raining. We're supposed to have a lot of rain. When that happens, a lot of things start to sometimes not look that great. And we wanted to catch everything, what it looks like now. So I'll leave you all here. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye, guys.